Hey man, well, regarding your question about the theory uh, and the approach of learning theory, um, theory, is, as I said, is not something that, I don't know, you just uh, put it in a little corner there and uh, you just go on picking and everything will fall into place. No. Um, theory is actually going to help you speak the same language with everybody else in the field of music. And it's going to help you express yourself easily when discussing with other, other people and understanding how to uh, write your own ideas and better express yourself. So, in my opinion, you should not just go crazy over technique and uh, leave the theory aside and especially not study theory in the bus. When you ride the bus, listen to some music, relax, look out the window, but I really don't agree with the, um, I don't know, studying things while being on the go because your mind is not there. Your mind is going to be uh, looking at, I don't know, what sort of girl just went off the bus and you're, hey, hello there. Uh, that annoying man that pushes you or something, anything. Your mind is not going to be there. Why not take, I don't know, uh, 20 minutes out of your practice routine to understand a theory concept that you will use and develop in your practice. For instance, one thing which you can use uh, is pick up all your uh, exercises and the patterns that you're practicing and are you able to say each note of course you're not going to do it at high speed but one exercise that's helped me understand the fretboard and see intervals and triads or pezio shapes and all that sort of stuff was saying the notes that I was playing and that way I figured out how a shape looks like and why those intervals are, um, succeed each other in a particular order. There's a lot of stuff to talk about here, but first off, uh, you said you know how to harmonize a scale, right? Um, so your first assignment regarding this whole theory thing is going to be the following. I'm going to post here three uh, lessons which are based on harmonizing and I would like you to, uh, they're basically with chords if I'm not mistaken, and I would like you to take those chord shapes and arpeggiate them, see, instead of just playing string, just one chord, play each note, use 16 notes. I don't even want you to use that backing track if you, it's too fast or something. Just pick up a metronome, let it fly at a speed that is pretty much comfortable to play each arpeggio shape that is created behind that chord, you know, because uh, if you play a chord with all the notes simultaneously, it's going to be a chord. If you pick each note separately, it's going to be an arpeggio, okay? Hopefully you're with me so far. and. In that first lesson, let's say, I'm not going to give you all three of them, I'm just going to give you one of them, okay? So, let's recap. It's basically a, a lesson which treats, uh, treat, sorry, which uh, teach, teaches you a thing or two about harmonizing a scale. But, uh, I would like you to arpeggiate those chords and say each note as you play it, okay? That's what I want you to do, it's slow. And observe how those thirds are stacked there and how all those interval shapes are looking on the neck because from that point on as you get more and more familiar with the, this idea of harmonizing the scale you're, we're going to talk a little bit later about how to create chord progression uh, chord progressions, various chord progressions out of uh, this idea of harmonizing a scale okay? so Check out the lesson which you're going to find right underneath this video and try those arpeggio shapes uh, which are going to be pretty interesting and say the notes, sing them. If you have uh, C, E, G, see this is a major arpeggio, 
I can't play it as a chord with my voice because that would mean that I would have a polyphonic voice and that would be, that would be really freaky. I would sound like a demon from hell or something. <laughs> but anyway, C, E, G, okay? See, in my head, I already have that arpeggio and I know how a major third sounds against uh, its root and the fifth against the root. So see, C, E, G, C, G, C, E, C, um, root major third, and then immediately I said the root and a fifth. So I can sing them separately or together as a chord. I don't have any trouble with that. And I know how to uh, transform this idea into uh, an arpeggio, which is maybe more extended because it has all those three notes over and over again on various octaves. But just to start off, let's try this one, okay? And then we're going to talk about how to use the harmonization and how to use the circle of fifths. I don't think you know anything about it, if I remember correctly, out of uh, what you stated there. But we're going to talk about all that. But first, this first assignment, okay? And if you can do a video recording uh, when you say the notes, that would be pretty awesome. Uh, and don't run away from singing, man. It's going to help you a whole lot. You don't have to be a soprano or I don't know what sort of a hell of a vocalist. All I want you to do is be able to reproduce those notes and say their names rhythmically. Okay, that means that you know very well where each note is. When you play it, you can sing it. Okay? Trust me, it's going to help you on the long run a lot. And you're going to be practicing your picking technique at the same time. Yeah? Pretty nifty, yeah? <laughs> okay. If you have any questions, write me.